In this video, we're going to take a look at how plants reproduce. Like animals, plants have a variety of strategies for reproduction. They can reproduce asexually. For example, if you take a part of a plant, uh, that plant part can develop into a clone. Uh, and this is advantageous if a plant is in a stable environment. Plants can also reproduce sexually. Um, and this is advantageous in unstable environments because, as we know, sex increases genetic diversity. However, sexual reproduction is a challenge for plants because most plants are terrestrial. They live on land and thus there is little water available for their sperm to swim and fertilize an egg. So they have developed special strategies for bringing sperm to eggs. And different types of plants have different strategies. But the strategy we're going to focus on in this video is the strategy that angiosperms use. Angiosperms are types of plants that use flowers to reproduce. So let's take a look at the structure and function of a flower. Here is a typical flower. We can see the petal, which is often brightly colored to attract insects and other animals as pollinators. More about that later. There's also the sepal. This is green and this protects the flower when it's closed. Then we have a sticky structure called the stigma. The stigma's job is to capture pollen. The stigma is supported by a long structure called the style and that connects to the plant's ovary. And within the ovary are smaller compartments called ovules, and within each ovule, an egg cell develops. And this whole group of structures is known as the carpal, and this is the female part of the flower. And many flowers have both male and female parts. Let's look at the male part. The male part consists of the anther. This is where pollen is produced, and pollen contains sperm. And the anther is supported by the filament. These two structures together make up the stamen, the male part of the plant. And that's easy to remember because you can see the word men in stamen. So here's a summary of those structures and functions for your notes. Now, let's take a look at pollen because this is a really important adaptation for angiosperms. Pollen is basically tiny grains, each containing plant sperm. Now, Pollen has to be transferred from one plant to another during a process known as pollination. And this can happen in a few ways. Wind can transfer pollen uh, because pollen is so lightweight, but animals can also act as pollinators by carrying pollen between plants. So bats are popular pollinators, birds, insects, including flies, bees, and butterflies. So let's take a look at this whole process. And I know there's a lot of information in this diagram, but we're gonna start at the very beginning. So within the flower, the first steps are meiosis. Meiosis occurs in the anther to produce sperm, and meiosis is going to occur within the ovules to produce eggs. So once we have our gametes, the next step is pollination. And during pollination, pollen is gonna be transferred from the anther to the stigma. Once the pollen gets to the stigma, a pollen tube is going to form, and the sperm will travel down that pollen tube to the ovule where the eggs are waiting. And now fertilization can occur. The sperm can fuse with the egg inside the ovule. And now something really cool happens. That ovule containing a fertilized egg is going to develop into a seed. And that fertilized egg, that zygote, is going to develop into an embryo. So when you eat seeds, you're really eating plant embryos encased in a protective coat. Now, outside of the seed, something else interesting happens. A fruit forms. So the ovary of the plant develops into a fruit. So we have the fruit, the ovary, surrounding the seeds, the growing embryos. And then the last step is germination for that seed to sprout into an adult plant. Now let's zero in on a couple of things, the function of fruit. Many people think that fruit is there to nourish the seeds, but that's not true. 
there's food inside the seed for the plant embryo. The function of fruit is two things, to disperse the seeds and to protect the seeds. For example, if an animal eats some fruit, that fruit containing the seed might pass through the animal's body and be deposited somewhere else. Or this coconut is going to disperse a seed to another island. Or this dandelion, these are actually fruits being blown, uh, that's also for seed dispersal. And one note about germination. Germination is when a seed goes from being dormant, sleeping, to sprouting, like this picture shows. And that is triggered by water. Water is the cue that tells the seed to wake up, start germinating, and growing. So let's sum all of this up. A summary of sexual reproduction in flowering plants. We start in the flower with an ovary containing an ovule. If pollination and fertilization occur, that ovary develops into a fruit and the ovule develops into a seed. And that seed contains the embryo, some food, and a protective coat. Then that seed, if it's triggered by water, will germinate and then grow into a seedling and then finally another adult plant. And that concludes our exploration of plant reproduction.